So Propel SEL, it's a three-year initiative uh, co-created by the Carlson Family Foundation and Greater Twin Cities United Way. Uh, we wanted to build understanding around where the field was, uh, the out-of-school time and mentoring fields around social-emotional learning and provide some professional development opportunities for youth workers and mentors in the field. Um, so we used community engagement meetings, uh, some key informant interviews, and we have uh, a 25-member advisory council, which um, Jonathan from Generation Next is on, amongst uh, some others of you in the room um, to uh, be utilized to inform uh, uh, priorities SEL skills and how can we best um, use th that information uh, to create a meaningful professional development experience. Um, so the initiative started out with asking five questions and um, those five questions were one, should our field even become more intentional in supporting the SEL learning of youth and the ways of adults to work um, to develop SEL skills and attitudes? Uh, two, how intentional should the field be in supporting SEL? Three, should we prioritize a set of SEL skills that um, our field youth workers and programs intentionally support? If so, um, what uh, SEL skills should the field focus? And lastly, number five, how should we support youth programs and practitioners in improving SEL outcomes for their youth in the program? So those were the five questions we set out um, to ask. Along with those, we had some starting values and assumptions that we wanted to test and be explicit about. Um, I think some of these will be familiar um, from Dale's presentation. But we wanted to recognize that everyone had a role in supporting um, and developing SEL skills with young people. So this includes parents, coaches, teachers, youth workers, mentors. Um, this, this particular initiative is focused specifically on youth workers and, and mentors in the field. Um, we also wanted to focus on improving youth worker practice and not proving whether youth had a certain level of SEL skill. Uh, we, uh, again, wanted to understand and acknowledge that cultural and contextual um, factors are essential when, um, when practicing SEL and, and uh, developing professional development around it. Uh, we also knew that um, one set of SEL skills is not going to work for every young person. And so we needed to acknowledge that, um, um, that piece. And, um, and also, you know, you heard this in Dale's presentation, we wanted to make sure that SEL information wasn't used to pathologize or, or used as a weapon against young people. So those are some of the guiding um, principles that we were going into this work. Um, we sought to answer those five questions I mentioned earlier. Uh, we hosted about 24 convenings this um, past fall. Uh, in the nine county metro region, totaling about um, nearly 300 uh, individuals. 75 of those were young people themselves talking about their own social emotional learning development and what they wanted to prioritize. Um, and after those, um, some initial analysis, so we're still doing some, some deep looking into to the themes that came out of that. There was general agreement um, that we wanted to build intentionality um, of SEL into programming. And there's some general agreement to prioritize, um, mainly for some of the reasons Dale, Dale mentioned that there's, what, 32 frameworks you mentioned? Um, and so that's just too much to hold and understand and that prioritization would be helpful. But also countering that with, if we narrow that too much, that it be, can become um, not inclusive and can also become high stakes. So um, some other considerations is that many of the out-of-school time programs that, that um, were part of these community conversations, fell in different places and in intentionality around their SEL um, within their programming, but all of them did want more support um, and more um, thinking around how they would measure and track SEL skill development. Um, uh, and so we'll dig more into that. Um, piece as well. And so I wanted to thank those of you who are in the room and not in the room who were able to attend those. Um, so where we're currently at right now is transitioning from um, these community conversations that we had to then taking that information and developing a meaningful PD opportunity for um, uh, youth workers and mentors. Um, we also want to recognize that there's lots of great work going on and so we want to lift up um, the use work, um, think about how we're partnering with Generation Next and MDE um, and a number of a, a variety of program providers um, as well who is doing this great work and how can we showcase and learn from each other in the out-of-school time field about how to get better at this. 
Um, so this has been an adaptive process. So I don't know what this PD experience will look like um, right now, but we do plan to host a convening um, later this spring to share the deeper analysis that came from these community conversations um, and share more about what that PD process will look like. So. Um, and then our long game is really to be intentional about how this PD experience um, for youth workers and mentors can live with our city, regional, statewide networks um, so that this can live beyond just this three-year initiative. 